Up next, we'll hear from Purdue head coach Matt Painter. Boilermakers return four of five starters from a year ago. This, a team that won 21 games a year ago and made it to the NCAA tournament. Here is the Purdue head coach approaching the podium and set to address the media at 2015 Big Ten Basketball Media Day. Season all Big Ten selection, A.J. Hammonds. Coach, welcome back. We'll start Thank with you. an opening statement and then open it up for questions. Uh, well, we're excited, um, like everybody else, for the start of the season. I think um, it's uh, it's tough because you, you really try to to build on what you know you did last year, but also stay injury free. I think that's a tough thing to to make improvements, but also stay healthy. And um, right now, we're in a really good spot because we're really healthy, and you know, keep our fingers crossed. But just trying to get better. You know, through practice and through competition, um, without injuring ourselves, we have a lot of big bodies. We try to be competitive and try to be physical and um, and, and play without our hands on the perimeter. But but really, try to get better each day through competition. I think we've been able to do that. And um, you know, just excited about returning all of our guys except John Octius, who was um, unbelievable for us and unbelievable for our program and just his work ethic and his. Just the way he went about it, doing his business every day. But I think Rafael Davis and A.J. Hammonds, uh, the two seniors that we have returning, um, are going to have their best years. And I'm excited for them because we've had to go through some things and, and we've had some struggles. But um, I thought we had a, a great conference season last year after a very average non-conference season. So looking just to have that consistency throughout the year. Thank you, Coach. Please raise your hand if you have a question. Let's go front aisle. Hey, Matt, I guess, uh, um, what are you looking for from, from AJ in terms of what does he need to improve on? What's the key for him? I think just his consistency. I think that's the, um, the most important piece, I thought, in the last two and a half months of the season. He was really consistent for us, and he was engaged. Um, his motor is something that's always going to be questioned. He has the ability to be a better sprinter. Um, and, and change the ends of the floor better. And so just challenging him, you know, to do those things and, and to have that complete season, kind of like our team. Anytime you have somebody that can affect the game on both ends, you know, when they go and they play well, I mean, you know, it helps everything because he can erase some mistakes at the other ends. He might not get blocks, but he's going to change some things. And, and so I just think him just keeping his focus and being consistent is the most important thing. Go on the left-hand side, second row. Coach, uh, obviously there was a round of rule changes last year, and there's another one this year. Did you feel like the, uh, and I know it was a transition for everyone, um, officials included, did you feel like the officiating from that standpoint was consistent throughout the year? And, or how long do you think that it will take for these new rules to really be right. ingrained in the game? Well, I think um, it just depends on what rule you're, you're saying in a very general set because there's a lot of changes this year. Um, but, you know, last year it, you have to just stick with it. Whatever they're going to do, they have to have kind of that togetherness as a unit, as an officiating unit, to stick with it. If you're going to call it close on the perimeter, um, in the middle of November, you got to be able to do that in the middle of March. Um, and sometimes, not sometimes, a lot of times, that hasn't happened. And so what we're searching for, uh, the coaches is what the officials are searching for too, but there's, a, there's varying ages and experience of officials. And, with, and the reason I say that is because if you've officiated for 30 years, you're kind of set in how you officiate versus someone who's maybe just up and coming, they've only officiated for say 10 years. Um, and so they're, you know, they have to get everybody on the same page. And so it's like coaching. There's a lot of different ways. You're going to listen to a lot of different coaches that are very successful, but they do it a lot of different ways. There's different ways to be successful, but when you get it to officiating, everybody has to be on the same page and do it the same way. So when you say something to an official on a Tuesday for an explanation on something that's the same on Saturday and you get two different answers, you know, that, that's it's frustrating for, for a coach at times. So we'll see. I don't, I don't really have an answer for that. They, they have to get on the same page and, and be able to officiate it the way they're saying they're going to officiate it.
lineup with the addition of Swanigan um, and with him being such a good passer and being just a flexible, versatile player. How excited are you in terms of uh, just flexibility in general with your lineups and being able to play him at the three and four? Yeah, he's, you know, Vince Edwards is very versatile. He's, you know, from watching practice from last year, he's probably our most improved guy. Not to say other people haven't improved, but um, his body's better. He's showing more athleticism. Um, his ability to defend multiple people really help us. But, you know, he can rebound the basketball. He can pass the basketball. He's very intelligent. Um, and then his skill level, you know, he had a slow kind of releasing shot. He's worked on, you know, more of a catch and shoot type guy right there, then being able to play off of that. But, you know, he's somebody you can put, you know, all over the court. And, uh, you know, we're excited. Not a lot of people are talking about him. Um, and I, I think he can make a big jump this season. Got time for one more question for Coach? Let's go front on the aisle. <clears throat> Hey, Matt, I know it's, it's uh, very early. Uh, Big Ten projects be very strong this year, you know, five, six, top 25 games. Just your, your thoughts. Again, I know it's early on, on how, you, how that shakes out from your standpoint. Well, I think, you know, a lot gets dictated in non-conference. We play different people, but you see, you know, how people fare, especially at home. Um, and being able to protect home court and then getting some neutral games and kind of working your way to the conference season. Like I talked about earlier, you know, I think staying healthy is going to be real important, you know, because I think we have 14 teams, but there's, you know, those teams are all vying for a lot. Of, I think we can, you know, get a lot of spots in the NCAA tournament. Last year, you know, we were supposedly had a down year and we had seven teams. That's pretty good for a down year. Um, so now we're supposed to have an up year. And so if you kind of, you know, does that mean we can get more teams? Well, you hope so. You know, you hope so, but I, it's a it's a talented league, and if I if I say one name or two names that pop out, then I got to say more. You know, after that, there's so many good teams in our league, and um, it's, it's very difficult to beat them anywhere. And uh, you know, just excited for the season. But I think when you say you're going to have a good league, I think you have to do your part non-conference. You know, we we all have to do our parts non-conference to put ourselves in that position um, to really then. Because when you have a conference season, you're just going to you know everybody's just going to you know, go after each other, and it's going to be tough. You're going to have some teams 8 and 10. You're going to have some teams 7 and 11 that are some really good basketball teams. And I think that's kind of, that kind of shows you. But those teams that do, they have to have good non-conference seasons to be able to get in that mix and get on that bubble and get in so you can have 7, 8, 9 teams in the NCAA tournament. Thank you very much, Coach. Good luck this season. Thank you.